While DC is perhaps best known for its politics, the music scene in the nation's capital is getting a lot of play down south. I talked to a local band about how they're trying to put DC's signature sound on the main stage. Rare Essence has performed go-go music throughout DC, Maryland, and Virginia for more than three decades. While the blend of funk and R&B has not been nationally embraced, band leader Andre White Boy Johnson wants to change that. I don't think it's solely a DC thing because other audiences can relate to it. Usually the blare of the horns and clash of the congas can be heard on local radio stations in the DC area. But Rare Essence recently became the first go-go band to perform for tech entrepreneurs at the South by Southwest Music Festival, deep in the heart of Texas. The show was sponsored by the DC Economic Partnership, a nonprofit working to bring more tech companies to DC. Since DC has its own unique sound, they said, you know, what better way to introduce people to what DC is about than, than to have a go-go band. Johnson says vibing to a live go-go show is unlike any other musical experience. Once we start, we don't stop until it's time to break. Go-Go relies on heavy percussion and call and response lyrics to create non-stop jam sessions. We say, tell me what you feel like doing, y'all. Feel like moving my body. Rare Essence hopes to share the musical diversity of D.C. at more music festivals in the future. In Northwest D.C., for District Wire News, I'm Alexis Williams. Sony and Spotify teamed up for the spring launch of PlayStation Music, which is live in 41 countries. With PlayStation Music, gamers can now stream music from Spotify in the background while playing a game. The setup allows users to skip and pause songs without leaving the game. The music service is available on PlayStation 3 and 4, along with Sony smartphones and tablets. There is also a 30-day free, tr free trial for the premium subscription. So we use the internet for everything these days, from ordering food to downloading our favorite tunes. Could music streaming services be the latest casualty of the music industry? Jordan Sharp has more on the battle between music labels and their consumers. Spotify music streaming service may be in trouble. Much like the backlash on music sharing sites like Napster at the turn of the century, Spotify is facing trouble on multiple fronts. Taylor Swift recently has announced that she is pulling her music from Spotify. In a Time Magazine article, she said, quote, I think there should be an inherent value placed on art. I didn't see that happening perception-wise when I put my music on Spotify. The Grammy Award-winning pop star went on to say that, quote, Everybody's complaining about how music sales are shrinking, but nobody's changing the way they're doing things. They keep running towards streaming, which is, for the most part, what has been shrinking the number of paid album sales. But consumers aren't buying it. Yeah, if you're targeting preteens, preteens are, you know, they don't have money unless it's an allowance. And given the fact that everyone has a computer, of course they're going to take the avenues they can. However, it's not just Swift who is unhappy. Her label Universal Music Group, home to artists like Drake, Rihanna, and Katy Perry, is in negotiations with Spotify for a new contract. The label is pushing the streaming company to get rid of or change their ad-based streaming service because they claim it doesn't convert free listeners to paid subscribers. However, the problems don't stop there for Spotify. After acquiring Beats Music Service from Dr. Dre last year, Apple is currently working on their own streaming service, which could mean big trouble for Spotify and companies like Rhapsody. For District Wire Entertainment, I'm Jordan Sharp. Dime a Dozen is one of the co-ed a cappella groups at American University. The group was founded nearly 15 years ago and is still going strong on campus. They cover songs from all genres and perform a variety of contemporary songs from artists such as Miranda Lambert and Bruno Mars. In the studio, we have Dime a Dozen's vice president, Josh Matfis, and alto singer, Sue Telecat. Josh and Sue, how are you guys doing today? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us on. So, all right, we see shows like Glee and you know the movie Pitch Perfect and stuff, but what is acapella really like? Well, Josh said this earlier, we make sounds with our mouth, like, like Pitch Perfect said, but um, it's basically like a family, like you have all these people and they're really interested in music and they all, we all like just jam out together and have a great time. That's what I think it is. I came from, you know, big, you know, more like band, you know, actual instrument, musical background. So for me, acapella is just kind of turning that into an all vocal group. Nice. So, um, you guys perform a lot of well-known songs. Are there any like crowd favorites? 
Oh, uh, I mean, our Disney medley always oh, is a yeah. crowd favorite, uh, definitely. And we've been working on um, some new uh, pop songs. We have a song by Muse, which is going to go, I think, really mm -hmm. well. Yeah. We put a lot of work into that. This time we're doing Dime Does Decades, so like we're going to throw it back a little bit. So I think that'll be a crowd pleaser. Oh, so. yeah. I'm all about the throwbacks. Yeah. I'm a big 90s baby, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got to add some of that in there. <laughs> um, so you guys have an interesting story I hear about um, the background of the group's name. Can you <laughs> tell yeah. me about that? Yeah, so the, the group started back in late 2000, and over the past, the, the prior two years, uh, there had been two acapella groups to join campus. That was on a central note, and what later became Treble and Paradise. Uh, so when AU, uh, when, when Dime a Dozen joined in 2000, you know, by then they just said, oh, acapella groups, they're a dime a dozen. <laughs> and so that's how we got our name. Mm -hmm. Nice, flipped it around on us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very nice. So um, what are your upcoming performances? Uh, so on April 10th, we'll be performing with all of the other acapella groups on campus at Acapalooza mm -hmm. in K the K Chapel. And then on April 26th, we will have our final concert in the evening uh, in the Krieger Auditorium. And that will be the Dime Does Decades thing. Oh, very so cool. Really looking forward <laughs> to that. Yeah. So, um, do you, does it get competitive with the other groups on campus? Well, <laughs> it's not quite pitch perfect. Yeah. Like, that's not what it is yeah. like, I don't think. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I mean, we all, you know, we've, we've done songs that other groups have done before in the past, and we coordinate and make sure that we're running auditions and things at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to keep it as uh, polite as possible. We don't want it to turn into that movie style. Yeah, <laughs> very sportsmanlike of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Really, thank you. All right, so up next, while it's fun to post silly selfies and memes, potential employers might not always get your sense of humor. Stay tuned as we talk to a social media expert on how to maintain your online reputation.